I am so excited to share this project with you all. We are going to start the project with the resin component because it is easier to adjust the wood to the resin than the other way around. I built a slightly oversized mold into a previous project's pour box and sprayed mold release into the bottom. If you are curious, Tyvek tape works so much better than packing tape for lining molds. Time to mix the resin. I'm using a one-to-one -one general purpose epoxy resin for this project. This is pushing the limits on the pour depth, but because the total volume is relatively small, it's not going to have any structural demand on it, and I want the resin to swirl as it cures, it's okay if it cures quickly. I am mixing two cups of part B, the hardener, and two parts of part A, the resin. This is the amount for both the rectangle and the small sphere you see to the side. I didn't end up using the sphere in the pri final project, by the way. These get mixed for about two minutes. They'll turn cloudy and back to clear in that time. I then let the mix set for two minutes to let any air bubbles surface and then start adding the color. I'll then gently mix for another two minutes. I used a deep green ink dye and a green apple powdered pigment to create this stunning emerald green color. I just love watching the color develop. Because I poured this outside, I'm going to cover it to reduce the risk of bugs landing in the resin as it cures. They seem to be attracted to the heat. A few days later, I popped the block out of the mold. Just watch how the mold released helped this project just pop out. I absolutely love the patterns the cure created. I'm almost sad the faces are going to be hidden, but the edges that we will see are pretty cool too. On to getting this cleaned up so that we can put it in a glue up. I started with 40 grit sandpaper in the belt sander to knock off the majority of the uneven faces, then switched to 80 grit to smooth it out a bit. A joiner would work well here if you have one. To square up the edges, I used a square and a straight edge and cut them with the circular saw then used that edge as my reference edge for the rest of the measurements. By then I figured out the final measurements that I needed and I cut the official length and width that would match the wood components. I briefly sanded the excess markings off because they were starting to get a buildup of them with some 80 grit sandpaper on the random orbital sander. To complete the resin preparation, I promise it's almost ready for the glue up, I marked where the handle will be inserted into the piece. I found the center and then measured half the diameter of the handle to either side of the center. I cut this out just past the halfway mark using the jigsaw. I did this so that later on I don't have to drill into the resin. Resin can dull tools quicker than wood does, so I'd rather replace a jigsaw blade than a Forstner bit. Then it was on to cutting out the oak and walnut pieces, which went much quicker than the resin block. Time for the glue up. I used resin to attach the wood and resin, and I used traditional wood glue for the wood to wood sections. For both adhesives, I made sure to completely cover all the surfaces before sticking them together, and put this in clamps. I'll let you enjoy the time sensitive slip and slide that I had on my hands.
Okay, about a day later, it was time to remove the clamps, and you can see it certainly needs some cleaning up. So back to the belt sander at 40 and 80 grit to get the edges leveled out and the excess glue knocked off, and the orbital sander from 80 to 220 grit to clean up the fingerprints from the faces and the sanding marks from the edges. Next I needed to address the classic round peg square hole situation I had going on. The handle is going to be a cylindrical dowel, so it was time for that Forstner bit I mentioned before. I drilled a hole into a piece of scrap first to have a guide going into the main piece. This went pretty quick as most of the resin was already removed and it was just a little bit of wood that had to get drilled out. To dress this block up, I used a 45 degree chamfer bit on all the edges, careful not to burn the wood. Then quickly wet sanded the resin to 2000 grit before applying the finish. I used three coats of a water-based spray polycrylic finish with a satin sheen. I wanted the wood to still have a somewhat natural look to it, but give the resin a nice shine. I find the satin works very well for this application. Time to bring it all together. I didn't film the braiding of the paracord onto the dowel, but I was sure to orient the tails to the hammerhead, and you'll see why. We pick back up with five minute resin to attach the paracord ends into small channels that I created with the Dremel tool. I found that holding these in place with packing tape helped so that I could get all six tails secured before the resin cured. Gloves were a must here. Once cured, I removed the tape and mixed up a bit more five minute resin to secure the dowel into the mallet head, making sure the handle grain aligned with the head. I also attached the pommel with five minute resin this I had shaped earlier in the week on the belt sander and drilled a one inch diameter hole halfway through it. Here are some shots of the piece before attaching the coin and plaque to the faces. I chose not to share those details out of respect for the person who this was made for, but I can say she was very happy with her gift. Let me know in the comments below what projects you want to see me build next. Thanks for watching and have a great day.